in this particular lecture we will be discussing about the different types of windings of electrical machines as discussed in this particular module so uh, let us start our lesson for today so actually in the last lectures we have discussed on the different parts of a dc machine so the parts were mainly two number 1 the stator and number 2 the rotor the stator is the static part of the machine so it is the static part of the machine and the rotor is the rotating part of the machine and obviously in the stator and the rotor we have the two types of winding one is the field winding and the other is the armature winding so these are the two windings which are housed in the stator and the rotor respectively the field winding is responsible for the production of the field while the armature winding is responsible for the production of the induced emf in the armature for the voltage shaft and since the armature winding is housed in the rotating part of the machine so if we can draw the rotor i will just draw it it might not might not be a perfect circle but for your understanding i think it is okay so this is more or less the slotted armature which is housed on a shaft so it is in the form of a cylinder if you see it in a 3d mode so and you see the slots they are placed in the outer periphery or they are grooved in the outer periphery while in case of the field that means the stator they are slotted in the inner periphery and it is the rotating part of the machine and you see this is the shaft so it is the shaft so it is the axis on which the armature will rotate it is the axis and the entire rotating part is resting on the shaft and once you apply the proper torque and speed to the rotating part so what will happen so it is the output if it is a motor it is the output if it is a generator then it will be the input which is given by means of a prime mover so the rotating power p that will be given by tau omega where the unit of torque is newton meter and the unit of the omega is radian per second and the output is always designated in watt it is the si unit it is also called the rotating power of the rotor so as you can see 
a machine is always rated in horsepower. So basically it is basically 746 watt. So it, is, it may be a one horsepower machine, it may be a, it is a small machine, it may be a half of horsepower machine, it may be a two horsepower machine. So depending on your application or basically on your utility, the rating of the machine is dependent. So the most important part is it is the rotating part. And since it is the rotating part, it will be associated with some force. So it is a rotational force that is torque and consequently it will also have some speed which is denoted by omega or whose unit is radian per second. Now, as we know that the conductors, that is the rotor conductors, they are placed in these slots in the form of winding. I will just try to draw them physically. So let this be, be the conductors. So as you can see, this particular rotor, what it will do, it will rotate. Right? So as it will rotate, what will happen? If you consider a particular position or one particular point in the rotor, you will see that it will be experiencing centrifugal forces, which will tend to push the conductors in the outward direction. So actually when it is rotating, what will happen? Each conductor will be experiencing centrifugal forces which will push the conductors outwards. So one of the most important factors is the torque and speed that how much will be this force. So more is the speed, more is the torque, more will be the force. And definitely your conductors will be placed in the rotor. The rotor conductors will be placed in such a way in the rotor so that they will be able to withstand that huge amount of centrifugal force. Or else what will happen? The conductors which are arranged in the form of winding, they will be lodged out of the slots. They will get lodged out of the slots and the entire system will fail and it will collapse. So you must, before designing the rotor and placing the armature conductors in the rotor, one must be pretty sure that the way it is placed, it must be able to withstand that huge amount of force. That is very important. So the rotating part of the machine is called the rotor. The armature core includes huge number of slots within its edge and armature conductors are located in these slots. So these are the characteristic features of the armature. Right. So this is the structure, this is the design and this is the function of the armature. So next comes the armature winding. So this is the most important part, rather, rather it is the most important part. So the armature winding is housed in the rotor which is slotted in the outer periphery and the thing is the conductors or the armature conductors or the rotor conductors they are arranged in the form of coil and the coil ends are connected to commutator segments actually there are two types of windings in a DC machine one is the lap winding and number two 
wave winding. So one is the lap winding and another is the wave winding. So you see that the lap winding, this is the starting end of the coil. So this is the start point. And it is coming like this. So it starts at commutator segment 1 and end it, ends it commutator segment 2. So and this is the the finishing side. This is the finishing portion of the coil. So the start end and the finishing end, they are connected like this. So the first coil is starting at A or uh, 1 and it is ending in 2, right? And similarly, the coil 2, which is this one, it is starting, it is shown in green color, it is starting from here going like this and it is terminating at 3. Now the next segment suppose there is another segment which is 4 rather. So if I denote the next one by the purple symbol. So the next segment will start at 3. It will go like this and end in 4. Of, of course these coil heads they will be at the same level due to as I am drawing with a mouse pointer they are on, not on the same level. So this is the concept. So you see that the starting point of one or the of a particular coil is the finishing point of the previous coil. This is how they are placed. And the number of parallel paths in a lap winding is equal to the number of poles. So you always remember the number of parallel paths equal to number of poles. This thumb rule you always have to remember. So if it is a two pole machine the number of parallel paths which is denoted by A. So the number of poles P is equal to 2 since it is a two pole machine. So the number of parallel paths will be equal to P always and it is equal to 2. So now if it is equal to 4, this will be equal to 4. Likewise, the number of parallel paths will be decided by the number of poles of the machine. This is the thumb rule and some numericals may be given to you and on the basis of that you have to calculate the induced EMF say or maybe the back EMF in case of a motor. Right? Now next comes the wave winding. Next comes the wave winding. So you see the orientation is 
just like this. This is how they are oriented. And in this particular case, the number of parallel paths is equal to 2. The number of parallel paths in this particular case is equal to 2. So the main types are the lab pointing and the other one is the wave pointing. Now next comes the commutator and the brushes. So this is the structure of the commutator and the brushes. So the basic purpose of a commutator in a DC machine is to convert AC to DC and DC to AC. This is the purpose of the commutator. So now I can write it like this. So basically it is acting as a converter. The principle is like that of converter. So either it will convert from AC to DC or from DC to AC. So you see this part is rotating. Whereas this part is static. Am I clear? So this part is the rotating and this part is the static. And the material of the rotating part, it is made up of a material which is called hard drawn it is made up of a material which is called hard drawn electrolytic copper And these two are the end terminals of the armature. Right? So basically, the armature conductor ends or the coil ends, they are connected to the commutator circuits. And this hard drawn electrolytic copper of which this commutator segments are made, they are very efficiently conduct current. Why? Because it is a very good conductor. But the problem is that since it is rotating and the brushes which are collecting the currents, they are static. And what will be the speed of rotation if it is a if it is rotating with a very high speed then it may be 1500 rpm. It is a very very high speed. It may be 2000 rpm. Maybe 3000 rpm. So, for such a speed, 
what will happen between this point and this point there will be large frictional force so there will be huge frictional force so this brushes and this commutator segments their life will degrade due to continuous operation and frictional wear and tear so you need to replace the brushes and the commutator segments so the choice of which the material of the brushes are made is very very important here they are very very important over here and they are made up of graphite they are made up of graphite so what are the properties of a graphite number 1 they are very good conductors and number 2 they have very good lubricating property so they are very good conductors and they are very good they are made up of very good lubricating property so what happens when the commutator segments they rotate about this graphite when they are in contact in, in each other with each other so since it is made up of a very good lubricating material they slide away very easily they slide away very easily so this reduces the amount of wear and tear of the machine they reduce the wear and tear of the materials and they require very less maintenance they require very less maintenance as a result so now what will happen the commutator segments since they are carrying two terminal ends so if they are in direct contact with each other they will be short circuited so there will be a layer of separation between the two consecutive commutator segments as shown and the separation is made up of very 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 thin mica sheets so to prevent the adjacent commutator segments to get short circuited from each other they are separated by mica sheets so this is the structure and the function of this particular part that is the commutator and the brushes and the connection is like this the current that is collected or that is rectified that is passed through the external load so it is passed to the external load this is how the commutator and brushes works and at the load we are getting rectified or unidirectional dc output if it is a generator 
right so this is how it works so this is all about commutator and brushes hope to see you in the next lecture thank you